Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got some really exciting things to go over. We have some new hints towards where Generation 10 is going to be set. We also have some new rumours to go over about the Generation 10 starters. We also have some other updates about Legend Z8 covers. A lot of things to break down and get into today. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, let's go over all of the Generation 10 stuff before we move on to Pokemon Legends ZA. So we have a theory or a big hint here towards where Generation 10 is going to take place. And then we also have a rumor about the Generation 10 starters as well as an image as well to go over. So like I say, a lot of stuff about Gen 10. So we have Soul Silver out here saying some big things in Pokemon may be happening behind the scenes today. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, but you heard it here first. Generation 10 is going to be set in Mexico slash Latin America confirmed. Why make a sudden shift from Spanish from Spain to Latin American Spanish, especially when this painting exists? Uh, especially just coming off of a Spanish region in Paldea. So we have a couple people already obviously saying, you know, they're not really too sure about it. But there is obviously this painting here in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in the protagonist's house. And when you go over to it, it says this painting is entitled Street Midday. It depicts a beautiful town in a different region. So this different region is going to be a region that we haven't visited yet. Because if it was a region we'd already visited, it most likely would have been. It depicts a beautiful town in the Kanto region, or the Johto region, or Hoenn, Sinnoh, whatever. Plus, this doesn't look like any like city or any location that we've already been in the Pokemon games. So this is a new region that we haven't been to yet. Uh, we then have obviously the, the other updates that came out. This is quite a while ago and I'm only just getting to this, but I wanted to kind of cover it all in one like big Gen 10 video. But basically the, the translations for Latin America has now been confirmed. So uh, this was posted, you know, saying finally the Pokemon company confirms that they are working on a translation for the main game specific to Latin America and includes new names of moves and even types. Uh, and then also a little bit more information here as well. So in Latin America, unique Pokemon will be officially known as mythical Pokemon. The official translation for shiny Pokemon in Latin America becomes shiny Pokemon. Uh, and then also, uh, yeah, basically just like loads of different translations. So the main thing to take away is the fact that uh, Latin American uh, is coming to uh, the Pokemon games. And however, the, also, the other interesting thing obviously is this painting is from a region which could be from a, uh, a Latin America kind of region, uh, which could be where Generation 10 is set. Again, it's not like a massive leak or anything, but uh, there's things that kind of point towards it. And again, like the strange souvenir that we had in Generation 6, which obviously led to Generation 7 being an Alola, it's a very similar situation to that. And this is how we know that like Game Freak are working on Generations way back before they even announced them, because that's why they added the strange souvenir to Generation 10, because they knew that Generation 7 was going to be the next game. And that is because they might have put this painting in because they know the next generation is going to be featured, you know, around where this city takes place. So I think it's a really cool idea, especially with the fact that obviously all of this now information has come out about the Latin American translation. Like obviously they'd have to have it in that language to be set in that region. So it does all kind of make sense if you t if you think about it. And I think a Latin America region would be really, really cool for Generation 10 as well. So that's the hint towards the location of the next uh, generation. Let's move over to this re uh, this rumor here about the next region and the starters and stuff. Now, of course, this was posted on 4chan. So take it with a massive grain of salt. Um, and again, the image as well. It, it, it is, like I say, you, you'll know what I mean in a second. But either way, uh, this was posted on the 4th of April and it's titled Pokemon 10 30 years. So obviously that's Generation 10 30th year anniversary. So I work at Pokemon. I had the chance to work on the names of Generation 10 Pokemon. So the starters, again, take it with a massive grain of salt, but apparently this person works at Pokemon and apparently these are going to be the starters. But again, like I say, take it with a grain of salt. So we have a Raccoon Thief, which is going to be Grass Fighting. Um, so that's, that's a okay type. I mean, it's not the greatest typing, really. Uh, grass Dark is a lot worse, but Grass Fighting still, yeah. But apparently it's going to be a Raccoon Thief, so uh, that's going to be relatively interesting. We have a Dinosaur, which is going to be Water Steel. Um, a Dinosaur being Water Steel is a little bit weird. I'm assuming it's going to be closely based on the Narwhal, even though the Narwhal isn't a Dinosaur, but the Narwhal would make an excellent Water Steel type, because it literally is a kind of aquatic creature, and then as well as that, 
has a big old horn on his head. So that would be really cool for water steel. And apparently we're getting a bird is a fire fairy type. Uh, so grass fighting, water steel, and fire fairy. So it does, yeah, make sense with the whole kind of like uh, rotation thing. So obviously grass is good against water, water is good against fire. Fighting is good against steel, steel is good against fairy, fairy is good against fighting. So it does have that kind of... Um, I don't know what really what you'd call it. The, the kind of symmetry, I guess. Uh, and then they go on to say legendary is a Pegasus, which is going to be fairy fighting. And there's also going to be a snake, which is going to be a grass and an ice type. And again, you might be thinking, like, how would this person even know all this information? Like, Gen 10 is being worked on right now. You know, Game Freak is working on Legend ZA and Pokemon Generation 10. Team B is probably working on Legend ZA and Team A is going to be working on Generation 10. That's how, you know, we, we know that... Um, we know that from just previous kind of things anyway, but that's, you know, if this person did actually work at Pokemon, obviously they would know this information because they've already been working on the game. And then also, uh, Legendary is going to be, uh, Legendary Wicked, I'm assuming is like the evil Legendary, uh, is going to be a Minotaur, which is going to be fight and uh, fighting in Dark type. Uh, so those are apparently the Legendaries, and those are the part, apparently the starters. And then this other one is a Grass Bug type, but I don't know her name, but I have a picture. Um, so the picture is this here. So I don't know if this is like a fake mon that they've just kind of ripped off the internet. I couldn't find it personally. But uh, yeah, this looks like some sort of, um, I don't know, it's like a bug with like bird feet or something. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously the uh, the kind of pre-evolution. And then this is what it would evolve into. But it doesn't really look like Game Freak kind of artwork i don't think they would like create it like this usually they'd have like confidential all over the place and they'd have like it just isn't the art style that i would depict as a pokemon so i don't really know like i say i don't think this is true even though they are working on generation 10 right now i don't think this is going to be the situation a raccoon a dinosaur and a bird just doesn't really give me like starter vibes um and yeah this just doesn't really look like a kind of game freak artwork but either way let me know your thoughts on this rumor and also let me know your thoughts on this hint as well do you think that we could be seeing uh mexico or latin america as the next region for pokemon anyway that's all the gen 10 stuff let's move over to the generation 9 stuff and more importantly pokemon legend za so we have this really really cool post here from uh yumino tami or umino tami i hope i pronounced your name right and they found a really really cool connection with the generation 6 legendary pokemon and Pokemon Legends EA in Pokemon Snap. So Xerneas and Yveltal sleep for 1,000 years at the end of their lifespan. We have actually never seen perfect Xerneas and perfect Yveltal since they are said to have reached the end of their lifespan 800 years ago from X and Y. So if for whatever reason Pokemon Legends EA is set 800 years ago from X and Y, that would be um, when their perfect kind of... That, that would be their last... I guess, sighting of the perfect Xerneas and perfect Yveltal. And obviously, we got Dialga and Palkia getting origin forms in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Why would it Why would it be any different? Surely Xerneas and Yveltal, which we already know they have perfect forms. Like, that's literally in the lore. Why would they not have these forms in Legends ZA? It makes complete sense to include it all. And I'd love to see a form for these Pokemon as well. Also goes on to say, by the way, why is Lumio's Plaza depicted on Snap's ancient ruins? So obviously this is the city that they're going to be building in Legends EA. And then when we go to the ruins, you can literally see Lumio City here. So it's quite interesting that this city is in the ruins in Pokemon Snap. It all makes a massive kind of kind of uh, like connection. So massive shout out to uh, Yumino here for, for finding this connection. It's insane, really. Um, and it, again, it, more plausible as well as to why we might be seeing some new forms for Xerneas and Yveltal. So that's definitely food for thought. What are your thoughts on that, though? I, I heavily believe now that we might potentially be seeing some new forms for Xerneas and Yveltal. Like, I thought they might be getting one anyway. They could potentially be mega forms or they could potentially be just new forms completely. But yeah, perfect, Z uh, perfect Xerneas and perfect Yveltal sound really, really cool. So yeah, hopefully we see that. Uh, moving on, we have uh, some legendary kind of hints to go over now and theories and stuff. So this was a post from Soul Silver saying others have gone over this but i wanted to lay the groundwork for my future post so as we know the legendary pokemon of x and y are based on animals from the norse myths of the world tree uh, i don't know how to pronounce that uh, but they don't represent all the depicted animals on top of that there's different variations of the tree with certain creatures added or missing as can see in the images so it's hard to even say which animals a known legendary trio represent especially zygarde since there are two birds four deer, two serpents, and the tree itself. Xerneas' dormant form is a tree. 
I'll be breaking down each and all the possibilities in future posts. And of course, there's also uh, Ratatoska, the squirrel that goes completely unused in the Pokemon world too. Um, and then I really like this one too. Uh, I really wanted you to all get a look at these depictions and how they differ so we can dream together on what we could expect in Pokemon Legends ZA. This one even has the two wolves, uh, Skull and Hattie, which many believe are Zastian and Zamazenta, and that's what they were based off of. And that adds up, as the two wolves chase the sun and moon, just like Gen 8 followed after Gen 7, and Gen 8 had many Norse inspirations since the UK has a, a history with uh, that culture too. But also, I love the juxtaposition of Yveltal being based on the heavenly pure white eagle here when instead in the pokemon world it's more like an evil uh dragon below so that could be one obviously like depiction of uh kind of this tree and then we move on uh there's been an update to this post so everyone's first reaction was the a in legend ZA could be based on ratatoska which when i think of a squirrel pokemon he's all i see i like squirrels irl but a legendary squirrel pokemon just doesn't excite me much so I can't see it as the A Pokemon, especially because its lore describes it as just a messenger between the top and bottom of the tree, which would be obviously life and death. So instead, the A Pokemon feels like it should be a counterpart to Zygarde and have more importance, grave consequences attached to it. It definitely makes sense as well, because like Z, Zygarde, end of the alphabet, A is the start of the alphabet. They would be completely like parallel. Uh, but Ratatoska is a big part of the world uh, tree mythos and isn't represented yet in Pokemon. So I admit, I think it does have a good chance of being represented somehow in Pokemon Legends ZA. Maybe a mega evolution or a new evolution or a new sub legendary slash mythical. I'd just be greatly disappointed if the main slash focal legendary Pokemon is a squirrel. And then, uh, oh, I know, I could be now very uh, down for this. Like a dragon squirrel, I'm picturing it because green with a big chill uh, drill slash horn on its head. So yeah, dragon squirrel sounds really, really cool. I, I really like the idea of that as well. We have a little bit more information about this from Lucky as well. So I said, I honestly like the scaly squirrel dragon. Also, apparently Ratatoska inst instigated fights between the dragon at the base of the tree and the eagle at the top. Nobody can say if they wanted them to destroy the world or not. A tricky squirrel desiring chaos. They then go on to say a Ratatoska would tell the eagle and the dragon lies about each other. They tell the eagle the dragon is tearing at the tree to topple it. They, t uh, they tell the dragon the eagle is dropping rocks on you to kill you. Then the squirrel would watch them fight. So maybe there's like a squirrel legendary and the so maybe you have the z legendary and the a legendary and then you have the squirrel legendary in between and it's kind of like very very mischievous or something like that so that's a really cool theory about it all uh, we also have light talking about a potential legendary and what this a could mean as well so another theory about the new legendary pokemon from pokemon legend za could be uh the lambda uh, alpha Pokemon. So Alpha Sapphire and Ruby Omega are inspired in the Alpha and Omega. Greek A uh, and the, the symbols and stuff are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Traditionally used as a beginning and an ending. Rayquaza Mega Evolved to stop the primal forms of them and was a kind of peacemaker to bring the balance of the world. This happens in the same way with Yveltal and Xerneas. Zygarde is in charge of monitoring their ecosystem. When something threatens to destroy it, he appears and he reveals his 100% form. Then with, uh, with which purpose we'll have this Lambda A Pokemon. Um, so that's kind of, you know, another little bit on what this potential alpha Pokemon could be. It could be the Peace Bringer. It could be the Mischievous Squirrel. Uh, who knows? Uh, we also have a few other things to go over as well about this from Soul Silver Art. So I was looking at the Pokemon Legends ZA logo again, and it's interesting that the Pokemon letters are pink. Could just be the theme of Kalos being a region of beauty and fairy types, and that we will be beautifying Lumio City in Pokemon Legends ZA. But it could also point to a fairy type Pokemon playing a key role in the game, maybe even the potential A Legendary. I personally hope not though, because fairy is my least favorite type slash Pokemon designs, unless they go the majestic route which they did with Xerneas, which is flawless. Uh, and then not gonna lie, it does remind me uh, of them. So. We have Osmo here saying, I'd love that. Fairy is one of my favorite types. It has a McGinn, a color scheme kind of interesting. She debuted in a Generation 6 movie. Diancie also kind of the only Gen 6 mom with a Mega. So I, I think, I think Diancie, I think McGinn might potentially get a Mega evolution now. Like there's been a lot of kind of hints and rumors lately about it. You know, it, it could be really cool to announce it at Worlds and stuff as we've spoken about in previous videos. Uh, and obviously Diancie's already got a Mega Evolution as well. So why can't McGinn and get one? I, I really like the idea of that all kind of being the case. And then finishing things off, we have one last post to go over as well, which kind of um, carries on from this, uh, from the, the the logo thing that Soul Silver has just been speaking about. So Zygarde must be the titular uh, or the titular Pokemon of Pokemon Legends EA. But what if the pink and gray logo is actually referencing Diancie having a big part to play too? 
Pokemon Legend uh, Arceus, the titular Pokemon, was a mythical, which is Arceus. So many th uh, fans thought the next Legends game would follow this mythical pattern. So Legend Celebi, Legends Victini, etc. Not only that, but Diancie is obviously connected to made of gemstones. There's still so much mystery about Mega Stones. Could she be connected to how they are created? After all, Diancie is the only Generation 6 Pokemon to get a Mega Evolution. A Mega that makes her look like a queen of gemstones. Also, Pokemon Legends EA is a Gen 9 game, and Gen 9 was full of gemstone theming due to the Terra Crystals. Could Terrastal and Megas somehow be connected through Diancie? Lastly, the lore surrounding Diancie and Carving is very mysterious and interesting, and it could easily be expanded on. There's a lot of things that like need expanding on in Pokemon uh, Generation 6, like all the Carving Diancie stuff, obviously the Zygarde stuff, and I think you know this Legends EA game could be a really cool way in order to, to do all that. Um, but uh, either way, I think these are some really cool theories from Soul and Light and stuff like that. So let me know your thoughts and all that. What do you think the potential A Legendary could be? Uh, do you think it could be a squirrel or like a peacemaker or a dragon or whatever? Let me know your thoughts on all that. And also, what are your thoughts on this kind of legendary thing here as well by uh, Umi? I think this is a really cool kind of like find here. So massive shout out to them. And as well as that, what are your thoughts on the Generation 10 stuff that we covered today? What are your thoughts on where it could potentially be set? And as well as that, what are your thoughts on these potential images and also the potential star to rumors as well let me know your thoughts on all that thank you for watching though if you enjoyed drop a like let's try and hit 500 leave a comment like i say subscribe if you're brand new ring the notification bell for daily pokemon content have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time peace